My understanding is that she um, came here straight off the flight, like just. Oh, straight here? Oh, that's got to be miserable. Hi, good morning. How are you? Miserable. It's, <laughs> it is. It's you were right. very early in the morning. Mm hmm super bright in here and yeah. uh it's it's uh they, but they make you do it right oops they, that's all right they yeah. do make me no one made me do this i i am here on my own volition i'll have you know i mean i did take a lunesta and uh. smoke some weed before i got on the plane <laughs> so this could get real danny devito real fast i like that you don't like to see your guests before they come on isn't that is that strange or no i i just there's i don't know why that is exactly, i'm just but... glad you know it about yourself yeah I think we have a shortage of people in this world who will say, oh, oh, that's interesting lighting. I'm sorry I'm in pajamas. This is no disrespect. <laughs> I hope you don't think Do this is. Do you want me to turn the screen I off just you so you don't? Th don't no, don't please. See I just hope you don't think this is a reflection of how I feel about no, you. No, this is your travel. I, res uh, I just don't respect myself. Yeah. I respect yeah. you. Yeah. I'm sorry about this. Very passive aggressive. This is how people travel. This is how everyone no travels. Wonder, you no want to be comfortable. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You have to sleep in fetal position like you're, you know, in a bomb. Yeah. scare yeah. on the plane um no i like i just was really taken by the fact that you were like i don't like this and i don't know why and i'm not gonna make up a fake reason i held i held my pee because i you know i knew that you were out there and it could be anyone anyone yeah. anybody that's coming in for some reason i don't know if, if I, don't, I don't know i think we're just in an epidemic at this country we're at peak like even if people don't know something they have to pretend they do or make it up an opinion about something they yeah. don't know anything about. I just it's very refreshing when someone's it's, like, I don't know. Speaking of not knowing things, mm -hmm. people will email me stuff all the time. I was just thinking about this the other day. They'll email me stuff and it will be just the dumbest thing, whether it's about the news or politics or whatever. Yeah. I mean, just so stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, we have tools available that require almost no effort whatsoever to fact check this before you email me. Like, no Rover, you're an idiot because of. Yeah. It's like there's a like you could Google this and go, oh, I, I was wrong about that. Nope. No one does that. Nope. Though. You don't hear that a lot. You don't hear like, hey, for I, I have a. Why would you know that? That's yeah. my other thing. It'd be weird if you did know that off the top of your head. We can all Google. I yeah. watched your HBO special last night, and you actually made a a comment in there about I uh, forget what joke it was, but it was about you'd have to read the news to get this joke. Oh, really? And in in this day and age, very people are not well informed. And there there was I don't want to get political this early in the morning, but. You know, people always say, oh, the government, they, they want to take away your guns in order to, to, to keep you. Really, they don't have to do that. What they've created is Instagram and Twitter, uh, you know, the government to create that. But that that keeps people entertained and occupied and yeah. just mindless. It's yeah. insane. It's uh, There are rehabs opening up for social media addiction now <laughs> and phone addiction now. It's totally an addiction. Yeah. They say an addiction is basically defined by continuing to do the same things despite negative consequences. And it's totally yeah. <laughs> fits. And with when without the thing, you're restless, irritable, and discontent. And when I'm on my phone or it's not charged, I'm just like, I'm a mess. And you, at the end of that special, speaking of that, everyone's taking selfies with you after, after you know, the show. You know, I think we, you got to know your place in the band, and you got to know what people want now. And I think that when people come to a show, to leave without a photo would be a bummer yeah. for most people. Just because it used to be you can go to a show and just enjoy it and be present and leave. And, and if you get you to could, talk to Whitney Cummings after the show, that's an added bonus. Added so like bonus. A, a 30 second you conversation. You tell your friends, I just yeah. saw an hour of a great thing, but now it's just sort of has to be like, here's the proof that it happened. And you weren't here and I was. Screw people you. People are there for the likes. And I, yeah. you know, I always want to be able to available for that. Like if you're watching the NBA finals, there's always like a guy just taking selfie. Like the game is going on and there's a guy <laughs> in the front with these tickets that cost fifty thousand dollars and just he's just taking, taking selfies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I'm here, you're not. I'm getting a better view on TV. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, you just it's like how can I make my friends hate me and strangers be jealous of me? You um speaking of posting stuff, you just Love your posted segues. <laughs> you like this? I yeah, just I like it. Move so seamlessly yeah. back and forth. You do. Uh, Good vibe. You just posted uh -oh. uh, stuff that uh, back in September. You got engaged. I did. Yeah. Were you surprised when he popped the question? I don't know how long you've been dating her. I I have been. We were together for like a year and a half. I was stunned. Oh wow! Look at that. I was actually stunned. It was my <laughs> there birthday. There he is on one knee. Yeah. There he is. He did it. Very <laughs> traditional. He's. We're not traditional people. I never in a million years thought I would get married. I'm very worried it's going to kill my comedy career. <laughs> I'm like, this doesn't feel funny. Um, I need you to like cheat on me or do something bad, get some prostitutes. I don't know. 
Um, and uh, and because I, I have a rescue horse, I know this is big horse country from what I hear, um, and I, I'm dirty, I'm out, you're, I'm gross, I'm sweating, like I can't, you know, so I just was with my horse and we were doing this groundwork thing and I turned around and he was just on one knee. I thought he fell. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, yeah. I was just like, oh God. And um, and I, it, I I froze. I don't know, you're married. Was Just your, got married, yeah. Did she, was she... I, it was weird because it looked like I was going to say no. He panicked because <laughs> I was so surprised at what he was doing and I and scared, quite frankly, because I thought he like rolled his ankle or something. <laughs> and so then he thought I, and he was like, wait, what are you going to, and then he almost like tried to take it back. Take it back like, yeah, it was like, wait, no, like it was odd. I, I, I'm probably like you. I never thought I would get married. And I, I told guys, don't get married. Yeah. You're an idiot. Just live together. Live. And, and my uh, now wife was the same way. She never thought she would get married. And How then long we, were you together before? you proposed uh i think about two years okay before. Perfect. but then we were then we were engaged for like three years we just got married a couple of months ago and um uh yeah i never thought i would get married and well i also had never met this guy yeah as soon as i met him i was like oh, okay this is someone that i could go through an acrimony acrimonious divorce with <laughs> it'd be like see it's like the time of morning and i've had just enough lunesta where i can't say words like <laughs> acrimonious um and uh and it also it's weird i thought it was going to be like i was going to feel trapped and i was going to feel smothered but yeah. i actually feel this relief this like freedom where it's like you go out in the world and you're not constantly like subconsciously like scanning for upgrades. Yeah. Which what do you do in a relationship when you're not that was my engaged? Whole life prior yeah, you're to, just like, are right. you better? Are you yeah. better? Now you're just like, oh god, I don't have to think yeah. about you people. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm good. Like the whole, you know, guys. Box checked. You go out and and I don't know. It's easy. It's different for women. You can go out if you want to get laid. You just you just show up at a bar you know guys i mean we okay work yes, at. yes 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 I, I, <laughs> you may not be getting the best I, guy, it may, but you, you know. <laughs> yes it is physically possible yes. that doesn't mean it's enjoyable yes. or desirable uh, but we have to work at it and, and yeah. it's nice to not have to worry about that and 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 i would also say don't ever get married Maybe I was just dating the wrong. I mean, I was dating crazy ass. yeah and i think i'm pretty normal but the women i was dating Maybe I just drove them crazy. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say. Well, I mean, I don't want to. I don't know you that well, but it's always, you know. I would always a get a little of both. You don't spend enough time with me. You don't pay enough attention. And now my wife, yeah. when I met her, she's like, "Work should be your number one priority." Yeah, she gets it. Yes. I just have to find someone with the same value system and that you know you're not triggering their thing. So yeah, busy people. How'd so you meet your husband? We met. Or on, you're soon to so you're, you're, weird. You're, you're, you're I've fiance, never heard it said yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm you sorry. Your fiance. So get married fast, because I hate that word. For some of the fiance, fiance. I, I know. Hate I, that. I say Beyonce. <laughs> he keeps saying wife, and I'm like, I'm not your wife. <laughs> And uh, he, the other day he was like, yeah, you are. I married you when you were sleeping. <laughs> so he calls me wife. But uh, I, um, wait, what was the question? When did we How'd meet? You meet? Yeah. We met on the internet on a dating app. Did you really? Yes, we did. Which one? Raya. I haven't heard of that. It's one that's like, I think it's specific to New York and LA. It's going to sound like elitist-y, but it's really, it's, it's, <laughs> it's business specific. So mm -hmm. it's people that's like in Hollywood, in, like he works at Vice. He's an art director. Okay. You know, so it's like we never would have crossed paths, but we're kind of in the same uh, field, but we're not like competitive with each other. Yeah. It's like perfect. Yeah. You know, he gets what I do, you but not understand enough. the business, even though he doesn't do the same thing. You kind of understand what makes entertainment business tick. Totally. And, and like, it is very actor driven. Like it's all, it's like all the guys in LA I've been avoiding for the past 15 years. It's like Jeremy Piven, like John Cusack. <laughs> like, oh. so it was like, you know, I was very skeptical. Now are actor guys, cause I've always thought I would not want to ever date an actress. It just, f f I don't know why. Like that's a lot of guys are like, Oh, Oh, man, I wish I could date this actress or that actress. I go, she seems like she'd have a lot of issues. No, I bet if Mila Kunis way? asked to date you, you I would be like, you'd be like, no. I'd take this I, ring I, off I, and throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's like, what comes first? Um, you know, look, it depends on the act. It's like any, I wouldn't want somebody judging me based on my career choice, you know, yeah. even though comedians overwhelmingly have proven they're not the best. But you're filling, and people who get into entertainment are filling some sort of void in their life, of radio course. included. Of course, but a lot of people that don't do that are not getting a void filled. Yeah. That have True. some sort of performance goal or that want to be a stand-up or that want to be a writer. I think that's worse. Yeah. I'd rather have someone who is pursuing what they love, whether it's going well or not, than someone who's doing a job they hate, who's like, I always wish I could have been a singer. And right. then you're dealing with someone who's living with broken dreams and they're putting that on you. And then <laughs> every time they look at you, you remind them of you know what they never got. And well, that gets tricky. It's too. also like if you were to date a comedian, um, mm -hmm. 
That'd be hard. You're, you're very successful. Thank uh, you. I mean, as far as comedians, you know, I, I mean, I don't know whatever the pecking order is or right. however you define it, but um, it, it would be, I know, it would be hard for me if I were dating uh, someone uh, in radio who do. Do, and, and who's like more successful. Rush I mean, Limbaugh. <laughs> Man cow. <laughs> um, it would be, it, I think a lot of guys could be. Uh, we have, we have fragile, yes, we have fragile egos, and if if you go out and you go on a red carpet yeah. or something, and the you know, I think it would be. Here's hard what for I'll a say: it de- I think it's, it depends. Uh, if you've dated enough broke chicks or have gone through a bad divorce, a woman that pays their own bills, I think sometimes is attractive. Yes, yes. <laughs> you yes. know, like I find like when guys are just coming through a bad divorce, I'm like their favorite person yeah. to try to date. You know, um, but uh. You know, because I think after a while, it probably is nice to have someone be able sure. to pay for stuff. And um, but yes, it definitely gets a little bit tricky. I think comics are, you know, com- pretty competitive by nature. I mean, everybody is, I think. Yeah. And also, I mean, he's like really into the fact that I'm busy and work a lot. I think it's kind of the perfect deal. You don't he's, smother each he other. He sees me four days a week. I'm gone every right. weekend. He right. has the best life. Right, right. He's <laughs> he, out with his buddies. Totally. Like, I'm yeah. gone four days a week. All it's, those Vice guys. I really didn't know much about Vice, uh, you know, when they started the show. I, oh. It's been around a long time, but they started that show on HBO, the first the half hour one. Now right. they got like uh, channels and right. 50 different shows and everything. Right. I had no idea that the guy who started this, uh, like, I always, it looks, the way they do it, it looks, I don't want to say low budget, but it's it gritty. It's gritty. You know, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Um, no frills. So I didn't really know. I'm like, oh, look at this. Oh, this is so great. Like this yeah. guy got this thing on HBO. Then I saw that he bought the home that the Beverly Hills cop was uh, shot at. And the guy is worth like $150 million. Oh, he has like a, it's his insane. main residence is like on the coast of France. Like <laughs> he works crazy? out of a castle. Yeah. Yeah. No, v- Vice is massive. They have a news network and they do all these offshoots. I think they're super cool. They do like non-biased political, like or not, uh, like investigative journalism yeah, yeah. that's like political, but without like an agenda. Yeah. And uh, it's a little liberal. It is. Kind of, yes. It's okay. a little like I mean, muckraky. Yeah, it's yeah. very like other journalists but are biased. But they delve a little bit more into yeah, things. Yeah. And, 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 sh- and highlight things that other places, you know, okay, Wouldn't we'll cover. give 30 seconds to yeah. kids being bombed in Syria. We'll devote a half hour to Yeah, it. it's like investigative. It's yeah. cool. It's like you were saying before, everybody's so misinformed. I think it's a good way to actually go a little deeper on an issue if you care about it. There's just, I mean, there's too much to know right now. Yeah. There's no way we can possibly know it all. But Vice, at least, I feel like when I'm watching it, like this news is true. It's showing me sort of an angle that's not going to be influenced by like lobbyists and whoever owns the news network. You don't have to worry about yeah. all that kind of stuff. The, uh, how soon did you know after you met, met him? him? Yeah. You know, it's weird. I saw a picture of him on the dating app and my first reaction as I went, I, I went like, uh, Oh, that's like my husband. <laughs> and then I was like, Ew, you're a crazy psycho girl, like that's been programmed by Disney to want to marry. So, like, what kind of monster? Like, I literally was like, You're a monster. I said it to myself, like, don't put that pressure on this person. Like, I got like mad at like our media. Like, I was like, Why are women trained to like think about marrying someone that I don't know? Like, I went into this whole spiral and then I met him and we went, we went out a couple times and I was like, Oh, no, I don't think so. And then he was my husband. My first gut was right. Yeah. Even though I thought it was, you know, Crazy. Now, I'm trying you, not to curse. Are you going to? Uh, are you going to do a prenup? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how. Are you? I assume you live in California. I live I in know. California. I, I don't even know how. Dicey. I went. So I told. I just told this story yesterday on the air for the first time that uh, my prenup story, and she didn't have an Actually, issue. Actually, you told it. your prenup story Thank on you, Wednesday. Thank you, Jeffrey, for I interrupting here. me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank oh, you, Jeffrey. Yes. Not but, yesterday, yeah. Rover. Wednesday. Thank you. That's very, very yeah. germane to the point here. It's Can Wednesday. I ask you a question? I yeah. didn't hear the story, but do you have to go through all of the, like, if we have two kids and you cheat on me, I, like, don't you have to I, go through no, all the scenarios? Some, I, I've heard stories of that, like billionaires doing that and whatnot. Um, we, we, we didn't, delve that deep into it uh you know there is some provision if we have kids and that kind of stuff but it's funny i i went in and just being a guy and i went in and i i they go how much do you want to you know if if you get divorced how much do you want to uh give her and and i go well nothing that's the point of a prenup and they go <laughs> no, not that's, how it that's works. not how no, this no, works no, no. and i'm like 
Oh, wow. Like I was I was hanging my hat on this whole prenup thing um and then then I I was schooled in it and uh, they go, "No, you're you're still paying through the nose even with a prenup." Yes, so, that's right. Um, it's just we we preset what you pay through right, the nose. Right, right, right. And right. I guess it makes it easier if you ever do split up, you're not dragging things out. Well, for it's interesting cuz I have so many friends that they have the best relationship ever, and then they went into the prenup thing, and they got in a couple arguments about things that totally yeah. ruined their relationship. We we didn't argue about it, but it certainly and and even we had talked about it for yeah. a long time. Yeah. But when you when you actually get into it, and yeah. they, uh, it, it does sort of bring out not the worst in people, mm -hmm. but you, it's not it's not a pleasant experience no. by any no. And also just the, the things you ask like says a lot. Like I had one friend that was getting married. And uh, her husband put in, like, a cheating provision yeah. for her that was, like, if she cheats on me. And she was just like, what? Like, what are you talking? Like, wh why are you, why is your head even going there? And I, I had to ask him about it. And he said that he had seen in a tabloid that Catherine Zeta-Jones put that in her prenup. <laughs> it was like, dude, you're not a celebrity. Like, calm down. Because <laughs> most of what we know from prenups is just from, like, Us Weekly. So, yeah, like, yeah, just, right. You know, but I remember I was putting together my will. Uh, because I have lots of animals, and when you have kids or animals, you should have a will. And I, you know, and I um, was talking to my guy, and I, who I chose to send my dogs to, caused like a whole fight with like three of my friends. <laughs> like yeah. just like a hypothetical thing. Yeah. You kind of show who you trust the most. And then I asked one friend, and they said no. <laughs> and that like weirded out our friend. Like they're not even dead yet. This is totally like I'd have to die. Like what is? Like if I was dead, you wouldn't take my dog. Like it was just like this weird thing. It it, it the whole uh, the whole experience of the pre. I, well, you'll you'll go through. Yeah, it. It's, yeah. It, it it will. It's just a, a and they go through. I mean, you have to uh, go through your finances. I mean, every but is every the idea, dime that is you the idea have, we you know? just leave with what we came with. Is that the one you would have that you did? Um. Yeah, we leave with what we came with, but you still you still have to during while you're married if you acquire stuff uh whatever you acquire it's basically 50 50 essentially. but this is amazing this like emotional support thing like so you know Catherine, i'm bringing up uh michael douglas again uh michael douglas was in wall street one you're his right. wife during wall street one you know gave him emotional support big thing right wall street one is a huge success 20 years later they've been, they've been divorced for 10 years they do a Wall Street 2. Yeah. She comes forward and she says, well, I was emotionally supportive on Wall Street 1. <laughs> I'm a big part of why it was successful. I should get money from Wall Street 2. And she won. Ugh. And I think that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. Agree. Yeah. However, I mean, look, because I'm trying to stay out of like, if you've been married to Michael Douglas, you deserve every penny you get, I would imagine. <laughs> but I... I do understand, like, I've been with people who are making movies. I've been with uh, making a movie when someone's with you. It really, they can make or break how good the movie is. Yeah. So when I made a movie, it was so hard. It was so stressful. Like, the person in my life was really emotionally supportive and was like, I'll take care of this and I'll bring you food when you're in the edit bay. They kind of become a production assistant <laughs> in yeah. a lot of ways. And I do believe the relationship you're in when you're making a project will make or break if it's good or not. Yeah, I, I, there certainly is a big value to yeah. And, you know, my wife helps out like yeah. you wouldn't believe. And then there's lots of people, you know, who if you're in a relationship with like an artistic, I mean, my boyfriend pitches ideas. He's like, what if you do this? He yeah. like did the cover of my book. Like it is a little bit tricky. And I understand why if we then broke up, he'd be like, I totally helped her with all right, that. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I see how this stuff happens but now then, that I'm but I, I know, but then uh, let's like, uh, it's interesting. Like you see how she comes back with a wall. Wall Street too, and you see the her point. Yeah. If God forbid, if you ever get divorced, and yeah. he's like, I want fifty percent of all of her specials and yeah. this and that. Yeah. I think your opinion may change. You might go. Eh, I, you never got out there on stage. And totally, did it. but I was leaving you every night at seven o'clock to go do stand up, and I'm coming home at midnight. Like. Yeah. The least I can do is throw you some money for um, all those years you lost. You mentioned Whitney Cummings is here. She'll be at Hilarities all this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm doing a Sunday. Sunday show. Yeah, no one ever does Nobody a Sunday Nobody ever does show. Sunday. I need to tape my- You must be hard up for cash. Look, I just, <laughs> now that I know about this Money's prenup time. thing. <laughs> um, no, I'm working on my new Netflix special, and I have to just run it as much as possible. So I'm going all around the country and doing five club shows a week. Yeah, because your last special- 
uh, which was that HBO, HBO one. I watched it last night, and that was done in like 2015 or 2016. So it's yeah. been a little while. Yeah, it's been a minute because yeah. I did Roseanne, I did a book, and I did a movie. Yeah, you have had a lot going on in your yeah, life. I did. Your father died last year, yes. so I assume that that probably takes you out of commission for a while. I was while. out You're for not about feeling six creative months. Oh, at, no, at, I was at, in at that bed point. for six months. I Googled that le- because That's at the end of your HBO special, Wow. You said, I dedicate this special to my father who's right. going through some stuff right That's now. Right. So then I, of course, I, I go, all right, well, let me see how, you know, what happened. Did, did he, and then I, oh, this is bad. He actually died he did. Af- after the uh, after the fact. And he you did. wrote, I read an article that you uh, wrote about Thank this. Thank you. About you went to a wolf uh, sanctuary uh, place. I to, did. To, uh, Work it all as out. As part of the... Grieving process. Grieving process. Yeah. And were you close? I assume you were very close to your father. You know, we were very close in a on like a cellular level, but I didn't get to see him a lot, you know, um, because he had a very busy life and many lives and all of that. And um, and I, I worked really hard toward the end to be close to him, but I, uh, yeah, we had kind of a strange thing for a what very was, long what time. He, uh, what he did he do? He was just kind of a, like... You know, white collar criminal type. Really? (laughs) Yeah, you did like uh, loan sharking. Wow. I don't really know. It's kind of vague. And, you know, when I was going through it, the grief was so intense. And uh, I kind of knew it was coming. He had had a stroke. It it still happened really weirdly abruptly. But I had um, done all these, uh, uh, looked into all these grief specialists. And one of them said that when you lose somebody you did not have an ideal relationship with sometimes it's even harder because you have to grieve the relationship you had and also the one you never had Mm -hmm. and uh because i was in so much pain and so i was so angry i did ayahuasca uh and i had this weird experience where i this is going to sound insane this (laughs) is not the lunesta talking I was able to have these like conversations with him in my head like the conversations i wished i could have had with him and uh that really helped me and that probably teaches you a lot about yourself, too. Yes. Well, it also teaches you, yes, yeah, so much about yourself. But also, I think something kind of happens when, at least for me, and maybe it's because I was doing ayahuasca and all this sort of like spiritual work around it, because I was just having such a hard time, where you learn that like sometimes the best parts of the person you lost are still in you. Like my dad, as soon as he died, I started doing things that he used to do that used to drive me crazy, yeah, yeah. things that I would actively try to not do. And then as soon as he died, I started doing them. Like he used to call people liars, thieves, and worms. Uh, no, my dad was a very uh, – le- he also would go to grocery stores, and whenever he would see, like, organic produce, he would be like, who decides this? Who decides- How do you know this is organic? Like, he would, like, yell at people. And like- and I found myself started to do that as soon as he died. I yeah. never did it before. It was, like, this weird thing. Yeah. And um, it's – I'm not really a very metaphysical person. I don't talk about this kind of stuff a lot, but – um. But it made me feel like he was still like he's around. Almost a, it became right a part of you. That's uh, right. It was weird. It was weird. So so that helped me. Actually. Now your your parents split up when you were young. Yeah. Did you really live young. with your mom then? I uh, live with my mom. Pretty much. Yeah, I live with my mom. Did that have? I've talked to people on the show that mm-hmm. have called in. I don't have any kids. Uh, they've called in and they go, oh. I'm I Rover. I'm staying with my wife because we have kids, but I'm miserable. You know, like we haven't had sex in three years. What a great and thing blah, to blah, teach blah. your kids. Stay well, in a bad relationship. That's what I, I always tell them. I go, it's probably, you know, kids are resilient. And, and, uh, I think not it's only are they resilient, they actually, um, adversity is good for them. Yeah. Do you, so do you think it, it, it didn't negatively impact you uh it did because my parents didn't do it right i'm not going to try to say acrimonious again uh but (laughs) you know i think that that if you do i i used to be with somebody who um an older man that had a kid and they had a great divorce and she was dating a new guy from south america who was teaching the kids spanish i was dating him so it's like he had four awesome parents Mm -hmm. like if you do a divorce well and with the right psychological tools and without ego and uh, anger and re- resentment and petulance. I think it could be the best thing in the world for a kid. Now they now all of a sudden he had the awesome mom 
the a, a dad from South America who was teaching the kid a new language, me who's like a comic, and then the dad. Yeah. So it was almost like the best of has both everything. worlds. Yeah. yeah, has everything. But you could also do it really poorly, and it really damages. And you. that's what your parents did. And my poorly. parents just yeah, they just didn't have the tools, and I think it was over kind of before it started. And I do think they stayed together for us, which did not do a service to us. I think sometimes when yeah. you do that for a kid, you do it for like your own like I want to feel good about the fact that I didn't put my kids through a yeah. divorce, yeah. but putting your kids through a bad marriage is really terrible because you're modeling you know this relationships that's what you your your formative years you're telling kids stay in something bad you know that's a codependent modeling and you say you're codependent uh, and 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 it's funny because my uh, phone screener back there admittedly you're very codependent right, oh yeah Nads? i mean it's, for sure he really he, he has oh, yeah. to be in a relationship all the time they're well, that always is, like it's cra- it's yeah. crazy codependent and that in a relationship all the time is a part of it but it's also codependence clinically is kind of defined as the in- inability to tolerate the discomfort of others so when you're in the relationship if the other person is struggling going through something, mad you haven't texted them back, like, do you feel the need to take care of their feelings? Yes, and I find the most codependent people as well, and we just Oh, you up. vibrate them, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. As long as like, possible. Or you instance, find really needy people you can rescue. Exactly, and yeah. I, I've, but I'm the one who usually needs rescuing. Like, I'm the neediest one. And yeah. But I've read books on codependency, I've gone to therapy for codependency, Whoa. I'm very aware of it. Cool. But I've just accepted it's who I am at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it still lives the craziness. Like, for instance, I, the, the, the girl that he is on again, off again with all the time. Yeah. Uh, they, they were out at a bar. They met this guy, a fan of the show. Yeah. And, and in order to get back at him, she was mad at, at Nads for something. She texted that guy nude photos of herself and is like, "What are you doing tomorrow night?" And like, like I go, "How could you?" Stand? And then sends me screen grabs of it to me, like, "Look what I'm doing." Yeah, like how so do she you went through my phone sorry. and then he stands together yeah. with her though. I, I go, some questions. I love her. How old is she? Twenty three. Yeah, that explains <laughs> everything. We can move <laughs> on. <laughs> I feel Mystery like we solved. can change the subject. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Idea. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time. Did you trying do? To... Did you do crazy stuff like that when you were younger? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. But I, I get, I wasn't. I I've analyzed. I was unconscious in yeah. my twenties. You know, like in your twenties, you're just kind of a puppet of all the things that broke you. What did you, you do can. before? Uh, before comedy, is it something? Is it what you always wanted to do? I always wanted to do comedy. I mean, I, I went to school for like theater. I, you know, I thought I was gonna be like an actor, yeah. and it was just so boring to me. Which I realized, like, <laughs> you don't get to do that much acting. Like, when, you know, you audition constantly. And um, I went, but when I first moved to Hollywood, I was did a lot of writing. I wrote for other stand up comedians. I wrote for Last Call with Carson Daly. That was my first job on a late night TV show. I did that show Punked. Yeah. Um, and then I started writing for the Comedy Central Roasts. So I was kind of writing first and then doing stand up, but it, that stand up wasn't really, you know, it's so hard to get stage time. So I was kind of like paying my bills by writing. First. Yeah. I is speaking. Nads also wants to. He, he wants to be a stand-up. He's done oh, some good. writing. Um, and I told him we were just talking about it yesterday that <clears throat> I asked him, and he's just starting out. I said, "Do you practice at home?" And he said he practices, which I think is practicing good. stand-up. Like uh, what? Yes, uh, just like out loud and with my phone, like recording myself. That's good. Something. I, do you want a suggestion or no? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's also like take your friend to lunch and just do it then. Yeah, I'm really self-conscious about this. My friend who's not here today, like, he always asked me to do, like, my bits and stuff in front of him, my routines. Yeah. I didn't do anything until I got on stage for the first time and yeah. I was hosting. Yeah. So then I hosted for Florentine last weekend, which oh, was really great. cool. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I feel much more comfortable just... I, I think the one-on-one interaction is weirder for me than it is just to do Do you want to do, do a guest stage. spot this weekend? Are you serious? On Sunday, on the Sunday show? Yeah, I would love to. Okay, yeah. Come there on Sunday. Go. Awesome. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, yeah. Whitney. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, I'm even, the, my process, I used to do that too. I used to just like sit in front of a mirror and be like, hey, what's the deal with mirrors? Like, it's like, but you can't, it's just the kind of thing you have to just go out. Oh, I asked him if he records himself on his phone, like video, just to, to because to me, I think that that would be helpful to, yeah. uh, I can't listen to myself or watch myself on the show, but when bef- before, when I was just starting out, that's what I did not stop from the time I was eight years old yeah. until I actually got a job in radio. I practiced radio. I was obsessed with radio. Wow. I know I'm a total well, loser. Well, it's true. No, you're not a loser. No, I love that. That's why you're good and that's why I mean Tiger Woods started playing golf when he was like 5 yeah. or something. But I think that the difference is like you need to just be in front of an audience. My 
favorite way to sort of practice stand up right now, besides like going on the road and doing all these shows, um, is I have like a friend of mine that I've known forever. And so he will never lie to me and he will never laugh at something's fun. And I'll just be like, hey, will you come over? I'll buy you lunch. I'll make you dinner. And then I just like run. You run throws. I run yeah. jokes by him and just see if I can get him to laugh or yeah. go like, that's interesting. You know, just like a little mini focus group kind of. Because when you're sitting alone, it's just like there's no way. When I tell. watched your special, the HBO special last night, and I don't I don't watch a lot of comedy. Yeah. And in fact, most comedians that, that we have come in. I've never even seen their their stand up, but and the, part of the reason I don't watch, I'm I'm a, the kind of person that overanalyzes everything. Yeah. it's hard. Like when I watch your special last night, I start, I I don't lose myself in the comedy. I start wondering, does she? How does she come up with the material? Does she specifically try to to target a specific demographic? Does she oh, do yeah, this? Do the, like, yeah, I'm a yeah. I'm an I idiot love that. Like, no, I, it's not idiot. That's, um, your brain. Is and then great. I was thinking about Nats, and I'm like, I wonder how she runs through stuff. Does she practice stuff? Does she do this? Does she do that? The other thing I thought, what? <laughs> I go, I don't know how she stands up in those heels. Like you had these high heels on. I go, I don't, I know how you actually. Do you gotta watch question. this thing? I, I, it's in. I'm watching her strut around stage, teetering, and I go, and then there are a couple of parts where like you lift your leg, and I'm like, oh my god, like she could fall she right f- there, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then would you leave that in the special? If like this is what's going oh, through my god, head, like, my would you dream. leave that in the special if she fell? And is that embarrassing or is it funny enough to leave in? That's what goes through my head when I Have watch. Have you ever stuff done like any it. attachment disorder, like attachment theory stuff? No, I don't even know what it is. You might be, and I'm this also, so take it as a compliment. There's like five different kind of attachments, right? Dismissive, fearful, avoidant, secure, and one of them is preoccupied. Mm-hmm. You might have preoccupied brain. Okay. It's why you're. It's it's very highly fun. It's like the most highly functioning brain, where it's like you can't just look at something without needing to know how it works. And I, stuff. It's exactly how I am. Yeah. I, I, Called perseverance. Like we go. Uh, 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 my wife and I will go into a restaurant. I don't know anything about the you, restaurant. You business. have stand-up comedy brain. Yeah. Like I love that about you. like I go into a situation and I I'm just, just not funny though. But, no, but it's thing. but but what's funny is that you're asking questions that n- most people take for granted about like the mundane things that's going on. Yeah. Like I my boyfriend makes so much fun of me because we'll be watching TV and halfway through we'll be watching Game of Thrones and I'll be like, how does a TV work? <laughs> like lit- I'm more interested in how it. G- I'm like, is it Wi-Fi? Like, is it going through a cord and do the pixels like? Do they flip? Because you know, we take a picture, it flips it. Yeah, I'm like, is yeah. it? And he's just like, you're the worst person on the yeah, planet. I'm, but I, I am like, the, like, like we'll go into a restaurant and I'll start yeah. thinking, it's how many thinking, tables do they have? How, I wonder uh, how many people too. they'll have that run in in like an average day. I wonder that's how much. Com- that's comedian. That's totally comedian brain. And I it's love everything that. about. Uh-huh. I, it's everything in my life. I, yeah. The one thing that's great about what 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 I do is that. We're we're on in a, a bunch of different cities and we, we travel, so we're on the road for about ten days a month. We we have this big bus that we built into yeah. a studio and we can do the show from anywhere. And it's uh, it's interesting that you will get to meet people yeah. that you just normally wouldn't get to meet, and yeah. you probably do on the road too. You get to yeah. meet even if it's a sixty second conversation. Uh, it's interesting to me to meet the garbage man or That's, meet whoever. I, I, literally, and, it's like celebrities, comics, never. When I meet like a flight attendant, I'm like, so where do you, like I have so many questions. Like I'm just so fascinated by people that do anything besides what I do. But right. I, I think that relentless, almost obsessive curiosity is what makes stand up a good job for me, and this is a great job. You have sta- That's totally stand up brain. Speaking of flight attendants, I just oh, read an article segue. last night. Uh, it was, and I, I didn't read the article. I just read the first, the, I just read the lead. Uh, it was a male, male flight attendant, gay guy, caught having sex in the lavatory of a plane with a male porn star. Wasn't on duty, but was in their Delta uniform. This is Delta Airlines. And was suspended. And I thought, I'm a pretty liberal guy. I in guy. the sky? Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know how they got I mean, caught. was it in the sky? It was in yeah, the sky, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the plane, in the lavatory. I can and really I go, pee in that bathroom. How do you, I'm a pretty liberal guy, but I'm like, if I'm running Delta, I just fire that person. I don't suspend them. You're having sex in one of our planes with a male, a gay sex in a plane with a male porn star. Is sex on a plane illegal? I, uh, I don't know. Maybe not, but uh, I mean, still, if it's your employee, you go, ah, I think we're going to get rid of this guy, right? Just a, a this suspension. Is just generally speaking, not a guy who makes great choices. No. Like yeah. if I were to go have sex with a chick in the office back here, I don't, actually, I don't know what 
iHeartMedia would do. I, I don't know how they would handle that. If I would be suspended, if I would be... Well, these days, you those days are over. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, yeah, that would be bad because you'd because be creating... All, right. Well, you'd be creating hostile a hostile work, work yeah. environment and you're abusing your power. Yeah, And yeah. you're... You just got that prenup, so... <laughs> do you buy the... Uh, and I don't want to say that. Do you buy the hashtag Me Too? That's, that's not the right question to ask. Do you... Uh, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, I, I've seen a lot of things where uh, guys, I'll look at it from a guy's point of view and I'll go, that's not that bad. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it seems like sometimes if a guy is rich and powerful mm -hmm. and he has sex with someone, yeah, it could be like a, an actress. I'm not talking about Harvey Weinstein. Some of the things he did, creepy, don't get me wrong. Sure. And illegal, possibly, uh, obviously. Um but it seems like any guy who's powerful has a bunch of money. If he sleeps with someone who's trying to come up or mm -hmm. or whatever, doesn't even have to be a direct yeah. subordinate or anything. It's yeah. like that's unfair. It's a it's there's no balance of power, and he's abusing that. And I'm like, I I don't, I don't I don't really agree with that personally. I think it's probably a case by case basis. But if you're putting a person in a situation. Somebody that needs money and is desperate. I mean, this is, and also I think age comes into play. So if you're coercing a 22 year old who and you're a 60 year old executive, then you're a 60 year old executive. And this is someone that does, I mean, think about all the weird things I did for no one, uh, like, offered me uh, the cash and prizes by sleeping with them when I was young. I mean, I was a comic, you know, but it's like I totally would have slept with someone for a job when I was 22 and I wouldn't have wanted to. Yeah. I would have done it because I felt like I had to because I had bills to pay and I was desperate. You know, so I had many situations like this where I, directors were gross with me, but they weren't the they were more the abuse of power because they were able to get me into their trailer and they were able to, you know, do whatever. Mm -hmm. But that that I think does people like, well, they got money out of it. They got a job. But it's like, well, ideally you get the job because you deserve it without getting on your knees or yes. you're given the opportunity <laughs> to earn it, yeah. not because you were manipulated, because I think. A lot of this stuff that's like what I just call like impossible to prove, right? Because it's everyone's like, well, no, but she got a job out of it. But like the goal is that our daughters, wives, sisters, cousins, all the women that we love in our life get to have a job without having to degrade yeah. themselves sexually or trade some kind of unspoken favor. Yeah. You know? I, I just, some some of. It's just a, it's just. I also think it's that. not cool. But I also think we should also judge some of these things that. Guys are doing. I'm not talking about rape or sexual. Of course, assault. yes. No, I know everyone wants to have the gray area conversation. But I'm talking about like when you're a 20 or 22 year old guy. I did things that are stupid. I I treated women. I didn't beat women or sexually assault them or anything sure. like that. But I'm sure I was a jerk. Sure, to of women. course. But at the time, you were not a great, powerful, rich man. True. Who was you know taking advantage of the fact that they. But I think that people, you should be able to put that in perspective. Let's say you do become a rich, powerful man. Yeah. That people should put that in perspective when someone comes out 20 years later and they're yeah. like, he was 19 and he, you know, he, yeah. he tried to put his hand up my shirt or something. Yeah. You're like, and it also depends 19. on what the thing is. So if you're, you know, did that, like, it's not great, whatever, but uh, it depends, you know, on what you want to do with your life and how visible you're going to be. If you're going to be on the Supreme Court, it's a very different story. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, look, I'm a liberal guy, and yeah. I don't like this Kavanaugh guy. I didn't want him confirmed. But a part of me, I looked at that, and I I, uh, I said, okay, she she wasn't, you know, he didn't rape her. Um, but by the way, to, it, it, to, to try and not succeed doesn't necessarily have to go in the didn't rape category, because who knows what would have happened. Yeah, but I, I guess I look at it from a guy's point of view, and I go, she's like, well, I thought he was trying to rape me. I look, I, I mean, I did kind of horse around with girls, and maybe maybe that's me. But that's that, not what was happening in I that I know, room. but maybe it's me giving the benefit of the doubt. Because I'm, it's almost like being a guy because now. Here's you're what I'll afraid say. you could but get here, accused but here's of something. What, totally. But here's what I like about what you're saying and how we're actually agreeing is that good guys don't see it as weird because that's not what you would do because you're not a scumbag. So they go like, oh, no, he was just like horsing around with her. We all do that. You do that without actually the intention of raping somebody, but there are guys that don't that you yeah. can't relate to. Yeah. You know, so I think a lot of times we're having these conversations. I'm like, no, but you guys are good guys. So that's why you're like, that's they're just horsing around. This is like a gray area because you're actually not malicious right, and right. a sociopathic no, that narcissist. Makes sense. So it's like there's so but women, we know the difference. Yeah. So it's like you could horse around with me and I'd be like, Oh, that was like fun and like sexy or we're on like a date or something, but then you know when it's a different tone right. as a woman. 
And I think guys don't know that tone that haven't done it. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So you make the assumption, oh, he's just acting like my dumb friend from college, or I did that. But it's like we know the difference because yeah. we've seen both. So no one ever try. And Whitney Cummings is here with us. She'll she'll be at Hilarities all this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, and Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of this stuff in a funny way. This <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes comedians come in and and uh, I always wonder. I go, are they mad that is you know, like you go on some radio shows, not to name Bob and Tom, for instance. <laughs> uh, you, you go on and it's just like, hey, you know, they'll set up your, yeah. uh, hey, so yeah. you got off, you just got off the flight. What was the flight like? Your arm's uh, tired, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 but I, I don't know. I, so sometimes I wonder if people come in here and they're like, oh, I, I wanted to be funnier. I wanted to be I, this, I'm totally that. bombing, but I, I feel like this is more a conversation thing. I'm like, I, know, I don't really like to go on radio shows and be like, all right, guys, so Trader Joe's. Like, I'm like, I do comedy at night. <laughs> um, no one ever <laughs> tried to, uh, like in your career as a woman, as a, an attractive woman, no one tried to... Um, trade favor or try oh my to, god all uh, the time all the time yes constantly i mean i tell a story on uh, on stage this weekend about um something that happened to me when i first moved to la when i was 19 but pretty early on i did my own tv show and i became like the boss you know so it was sort of i think i became less interesting uh to people mm -hmm. um once you ha show some power sometimes they're like oh, okay she might not be worth it you're not um, like a starlet that needs yeah like i'm not you know and i'm working 24 7 there's nowhere to find me to, yeah. to sexually harass me but <laughs> had i been in the i'm just not in those hotels yeah um but yeah it's it's pretty ubiquitous and can sometimes be really pernicious and uh but i think for the most part the these men tend to prey on, you know, younger actresses, the interns, the writer that really needs the job, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I just wasn't an attractive target after I think I, I became sort of a How boss. old were you when you got, I know you uh, created Two Broke Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, you had the show Whitney. Mm -hmm. um, how old were you when all this stuff was going on? Uh, when I started those shows, I was 27. Which is young. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's, yeah, do, uh, when you look back, what did you, if you could do it all over again right yeah. now, yeah, what would wow. you go, oh, this is what I learned, this is what I, I wish I would have done differently? Yeah, oh, I, I mean, I would have done everything differently. I mean, the, the TV show I did on NBC, it was just kind of more of a learning experience in general. I would have, uh, I would have hired people based on my gut instinct about them not based on their credits mm -hmm. resume mm -hmm. i was so scared and i i was just like i'm gonna hire the people that have worked on the most shows fraser murphy like everyone like people that have just like been in the business forever you know i end up hiring a bunch of old sort of older uh vets and uh I realized when you do that, sometimes you get a bunch of people just going like, we know what we're, and you don't get to make the fresh, funny, sort right. of original, weird show that you want to make. So um, also my codependence, I would have recovered from codependence much earlier because when you're codependent and you're a boss, it's really, it's hard to say no to people and you want everyone to like you and you're people pleasing and it's just exhausting. And not Do you have someone around you, and I generally tend to do this where uh Doogie who works on the show she's kind of like the attack dog I don't like you have I your, com you have your confrontation per yeah, yeah you have your confrontation person yeah do you, you have, have your that bad too? guy yeah do you um it depends on what I'm doing yes normally I do on a t it's hard in a writer's room because you can't look at someone and tell them to shoot down a pitch you know <laughs> <laughs> it's just like they'll know it just comes off kind of passive aggressive and indirect communication i used to try to do that but i think when you're running a show or you're a stand-up and you're touring and you don't have the thing you need in your dressing room you have to really learn the skill to be like hey i have a problem you know so i'm learning that the ability to confront someone without it being like a whole drama now do you want to do would you do another show I, yeah probably, i'm working on right? one now yeah okay. so you're working on one you're trying to get is there a network attached to now, this uh, yet, amazon A oh really yeah i'm doing a show at amazon with lee daniels we just uh finished the pilot it's basically about all this pc culture at a college campus do you um there's there's so netflix and amazon and i mean Apple, there's so many uh, yeah, they all have yeah. they all have uh, there's so much content that right. is it's it's good for content creators, but it's also bad in a way because there's so much stuff that's that it's much. hard to cut through. That's right. Yeah, I think like Netflix. You're doing. A, I think you said you're doing another my special for yeah. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Netflix puts out. There's a 
billion comedy specials on Netflix. There's so like many. there's a, a thousand but of I them. But I think that based on your algorithm, you're going to get suggested the ones that are most like you, you know, and you know, it's interesting. I also think that word of mouth is kind of the new best promotion, you know, like I just watched a show called Killing Eve and it's 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 like on BBC. Like I just so many people have been talking about it and posting about it. Like that's how I find shows now. Yeah. Because there's too many shows. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. But this is gonna be on Amazon. I think they're a little more curated at Amazon. They're sort of restarting their comedy department. So the Netflix special, when do you plan that? I think thing? like late January, February it should come out, February, March. Is that the is are they the go to place for specials? For stand up, yeah. I mean it depends. I think they slowed down on giving out the hour specials. They're now kind of doing half hour specials and stuff because they're finding people tend to tune out. I don't know science. I don't know that much about, but I tend to like to write an hour as like a big story that has like one big theme. So I really this one needed to be an hour. Um but yeah, I think kind of I think Hulu's gonna start doing specials. Um or you can release them yourself now. I mean right. there's so many platforms showtime is doing a lot of stand-up specials Spe- louis ck started releasing his own stuff i was just talking to jim just Florentine. now no no no. Well, uh, he used to oh, well right. he did it five years ago right. and he made a million dollars and uh, overnight and do you, what do you think about him he's starting to work again um mm-hmm. what's your opinion on that uh my opinion is if you're um going to uh appear at clubs you should just announce yourself so people know mm-hmm so if you are offended by yeah, just his to ambush activity. people is a little bit of a power move. Yeah. It's so you know I think the policy they're doing is if he shows up, people can leave. But in that club, it's very hard to leave the way the room is designed. So if Louis, if I'm a sexual assault survivor, Louis C.K. comes on stage, I'm triggered, I'm upset, I want to leave. I now have to like, excuse me, sorry, I have to, can you get you know like you have to move your chair, you have to get. It's just it's a really tight in there, club, yeah. and yeah. it's you then have to be embarrassed and feel bad and. You know, so I don't think that they're handling it particularly. So great. give, so put them on the on the. Just uh, announce yourself, so people right. are signing up. They know what they're going to see. They, it's consensual stand up. Right, uh, Whitney Cummings is here with us. Uh, at Hilarity's all weekend long, which all, is a very two nice shows place. tonight. I'm doing the shows tonight are seven and nine thirty. I think the Friday shows are normally eight o'clock. But mommy's tired. Seven and nine thirty, so and same time to Saturday night too. Saturday seven, seven and nine thirty. Seven and nine thirty. Is that that's not normal? That's, it's normally 8 and 10.30. Yeah, is they, this a late city? And they also do, like, weird, it's strange. Like, I always wondered, like, the Friday shows are different times than the Saturday shows normally. Well, because like, Friday is you're coming from work. Yeah. And you want people to be able to go home and change and, you know, grab uh, their right. cocaine or whatever yeah. gets people through a Friday night. And then Saturday, you, you want to go a little bit earlier. Do you ever get into drugs? You don't strike me as no. the kind of person that would I get was, real into I have drugs. a lot of addiction in my family. And so I got the Al-Anon. I didn't get the addict thing. Yeah. Um, but I do get really bad migraines and I have a hard time sleeping on the road. So I have started and because legals, uh, California, legals, California's weed. See, I need to stop smoking <laughs> weed based on the way I just said that weed is now legal in California, right. as you can tell by right. the way I talk. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I'll just do that little vape pen before I go to bed. Right. But no, drugs have never been, uh. My my jam, drug addicts. However, was <laughs> you love my love, was mostly love my twenties. Love supporting them. You love, love them, love them, supporting them, supporting their girlfriends. <laughs> you name it. Um, and then the, the show Sunday. At Sunday 7 nuts is doing. Nance? Nance. Yeah. Nance? Yeah. Nance? Yeah. Nance? Nuts. I like nuts. Nuts. <laughs> We're gonna have Nance do do a guest spot. Hell yeah! Thanks, Whitney. Um, um, before I let you go. Okay. Uh, Roseanne, you, yeah. you were uh, working on that reboot. Yep, yes, I was. She uh, went off on Twitter, got the whole thing. Basically, it imploded. Now they've they've brought it back with the Connors. Yeah. Are you involved in the Connors nope. at all? No. Nope. Um, when that happened, what was? I mean, I'm assuming there's a lot of income. There's a lot of a lot of lives on the line a on a show like online. that. When something like that, happens. you know, it was my dream to do that show. I would never, you know, run someone else's show, but it was Roseanne, and I the the initial uh, run of Roseanne was I grew up with. It was my favorite show growing up. It was the first TV show I ever watched where the living room looked like my house and everyone dressed like my family. You know, it was the first show that didn't make me feel bad about myself. And (laughs) I loved that the message was always just because we're poor doesn't mean we're stupid. I think that Hollywood, we can be very elitist and classist with the program we put out. I actually think a lot of our shows like make fun of middle-class people. Um, 
never been a fan of that. And so, the weird thing about Hollywood is a lot of the material that they put out is so stupid. Like it's that's just, such a funny. I've never thought of that. Like the fact that Hollywood has the audacity to say like, oh, you know, working class people are stupid. Here's Sharknado 4. <laughs> it's like, okay, pick a lane. <laughs> it's so true. That's such a smart observation. Um, but uh, but so I really wanted, uh, you know, especially after the election where we sort of radically learned like, whoa, Hollywood is a bubble yeah. <laughs> and we are in an echo chamber and yeah. we know nothing about the, you know, people we share this country with. I know a little more because I travel, you know, doing stand up. And so I was like, this feels like a, you know, a great way to grab an oar and really explore this because I was seeing families being torn apart by voting by different people. You know, I, right. my aunt wouldn't talk to my, uh, her sister, my other aunt, it was tearing people apart. And so we we're like, this, maybe this could be a way to like unify people, put a bunch of people on a show that disagree. Jackie and Roseanne would never agree right. this could be this could be healing for the country um and uh and i'm not very political as a comedian at all i never i don't feel comfortable doing that i was like this feels like where i can yeah but you are more political yeah. in your personal i mean i, I guess I, I get that impression see, that you... i'm not it's funny like people want to uh, say that but you know i definitely come forward and speak out when it comes to a sexual assault thing and i think people assume that means i'm super liberal yeah not necessarily but i, think, I don't i think even I, republicans I don't, could be against I, yeah i don't assault. want republican women to get yeah. sexually harassed <laughs> either so but i think people just you know assume and yeah. i'm in hollywood bleeding and i must be yeah, this bleeding yeah. you know and so um but yeah nobody knows anything about my politics uh so and also i'm not so crazy far right i yeah. i'd probably be thought of as just a moderate republican these days with how far the left has gone yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but uh but anyway so do the show it goes amazing there's a magical quality john goodman's back and laurie metcalf is back and roseanne is really wonderful i mean she was really just a delight to me you know i think she really enjoys having comedians around and then the tweets would come and there was a couple cr tricky ones even before the one that got her fired yes, I that's mean, when like i started weird, like conspiracy theory like just pizza, weird ass stuff. Yeah. school shooting stuff that was just like outrageous and so i was always you know, begging her to sort of stop being on Twitter, and I kept thinking it was going to stop. And you would talk, so you did talk to her. I talked about, to her yeah. about it. You know, she got it. Um, I, I, you know, I'll never understand the need to put out a controversial tweet. That's my nightmare. I get one bad comment and I delete a tweet. <laughs> if I'm like coming to Cleveland this weekend, and then I'm just like, as soon Someone as from Pittsburgh's like, what are I, you know, I know, totally. I'm like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, I the idea of having drama on Twitter with strangers is my living nightmare. So I cannot relate to the gut, to the instinct to like just throw a grenade out to yeah. the world and I think she also didn't truly understand like Twitter is just where journalists get their headlines now you're just feeding headlines it's not just an innocent sending things out to your followers anymore so um so I had quit way earlier because it was it was clear that 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 was not gonna it was stop. gonna go off the rails yeah it was clear that that, that was gonna have it was in a burning building but is, is she you know I heard a lot of people come out and say, well, she's mentally ill, uh, this and that. Um, is she? I mean, uh, I mean, she's admitted to. Her? Yeah, she's admitted to, to that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't know the specifics and I would never want to diagnose somebody, you know, um, or take someone's inventory. But um, yes, but you still can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not an excuse for the behavior, um, but I do have a lot of compassion for anyone that struggles with mental illness and was hoping that that would pivot into a bigger conversation about yeah. that. But I think as a society, we're just, I mean, Kanye West, I think, is starting to bring that conversation right. back to I mean, life. And in a way, it's like, remember when Britney Spears had that whole meltdown yes, and like yes. people- And we're people, making memes about people it. People love and, it. And it's like, oh, that's so great. I mean, people really, they almost get off on it. Well, it's also, it's the saddest thing because when someone is mentally ill, the last thing they need is the entire globe mocking them right, right. <laughs> from billions of people on social media. You know, I, 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 it's probably so hard to- And I think with Kanye, I agree. I think like, dude's losing it. But some yeah. people will go, no, 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 he's not losing it. He's- He's just, he's crazy like a fox. He's doing this because he knows this will get attention. He'll know, like, I'm like I, really? But I it don't... is a mental illness to need, want this kind of attention yeah. at the expense of what it's at the expense of. Like, yeah. that is a mental illness, I think, in itself. Yeah. To want to upset and hurt. So it's sadistic yeah. in a way. And um, also self-flagellating because he's destroying himself. He's really toxifying his environment and making himself, you know, further and further away from anyone, any kind of love. What's the theme of the next special? This Netflix theme of the special? next special is Me Too. 
Okay. And sex robots. Sex robots. <laughs> it's all just right. sort of about this sort of moment. It's not like, don't worry. It's not all, you know, it's more just kind of all my experiences that, you know, now that, you know, people are able to talk about their sexual assaults and stuff and just kind of my take on the whole thing. And um, uh, from everybody's perspective, I'm going yeah. after the men. I'm going after the women, too. A lot of people want to talk about the women that are lying and that are, you know, doing it for the money. I talk about all that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how many. I I think it may be overestimated the number of women that lie about that. I, I, uh, I mean, look, but people, it does. It, it does happen. But I though. think it's important. It agree, but I think it's important to address it because I talk so much about you know um, it, and I think that a lot of times the guys in the audience are like, she better address the fact that some women are taking advantage, and I do. Do you? Do you Try to specifically to answer my own question that I had last night when I watched the HBO special. Do you say I want to? Uh, lean more towards having a, a female audience than a male audience? You know, I think I don't. I don't think that way because I, I think that's limiting and to assume that women would like one joke and men would like another joke. But I do always try to make sure that I'm fair and balanced, that if I'm going to make fun of all these guys about this thing, I'm also going to make fun of something equally yeah. about that women are doing that's lame. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. try to make it feel balanced so it's not just like, I think we're in this area where everyone wants to be so binary about like men and women and men. We actually have so much more in common than we have yeah. different. And it's just, I think, uh, uh, I just don't think you have to be anti-man in order to be pro-woman. And that, you know, I think also women should be able to call other women out on their crap and not be sexist or, be, yeah. you know, I think that everyone's so afraid to say anything about anyone. Yeah. You know, um, Whitney Cummings is going to be at the Hilarities two shows tonight, seven and nine thirty. So same a nice time club. Tomorrow. I hear it's a nice club. Yeah. Oh, you haven't been there? Before? No, I've never been. It's yeah, it is really nice. I yeah. mean, I've been to comedy clubs all over. You know, so they have like fold up chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're dumpy. No, this place, this is a nice they place. They have a microphone at this <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. Um, and big uh, chandelier in the room. Because thank you, Jeffrey. There's a chandelier in the no, room. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying because Rova cut me off. I'm just saying I've been to a, I've been to a bunch of shows there. It's a very very nice room. I think. You'll love it. Wait, Wait, I, was, I wasn't going to bring this Can't up. I, I wasn't going to bring this up. But, but. I'm, I'm reading, you know, we do re research when a guest comes out. And like, uh, is, uh, Whitney starred in a low budget thriller, EMR. Which, that is, that, oh, that really? is the like name? a 20 year ago. That is, I mean, that must be 15 years now, ago. Now, the reason I remember that is because Jeffrey is, if you haven't gathered, this is a little bit off. And we've, Wondered for a long time, is he autistic? Is he have Asperger's? What is it? And uh, he told us he's EMR. And I'd never heard that phrase yeah. ever in my life. And it was defined when you were a kid, they told you you're EMR and that meant what? Um, educably mentally retarded. Educably mentally retarded. That's what I was labeled. So then I'm like, I'm not going to bring that up. That doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't fit in with Whitney Cummings. It just doesn't. She was in a movie. But I did wonder, I like, don't was think, EMR, was that like the I theme? What was EMR It was mean? about him. Oh, his um, life story? <laughs> I don't remember. You don't It was so long ago. <laughs> I truly don't know if it's Lunesta kicking in. I don't remember. It was the first movie I ever got. It was some English production in San Francisco, and I, you know... Yeah, and it was obviously not a... had to give sexual favors to get it, <laughs> yeah. so I blocked it out. It Harvey Weinstein. That was day the was the hard. <laughs> oh God. Um, uh, Whitney, well, uh, good luck with the next special. Thanks for having me. I You're hope this welcome. was okay. Was I supposed to be funnier? I'm sorry. No, this was this was fantastic. There's a couch. I can't be funny on a this, couch. I'm this, too relaxed. This was great, and uh, uh, have fun at the shows this weekend. Thank You'll you. See her at hilarities, and let me give you the number for tickets: two one six seven three six forty two forty. That's 216-736-4242. I mean, it's the oh, internet. What's I hope that? it's on the internet. What's on the internet? The tickets. Oh, yes. It should be. Do you think? Uh, I'm guessing it's at hilarities.com. I'm just picturing someone my pulling right over, here. like crashing, trying to write down that phone number. Um, I believe it's 736-HA-HA. -ha, if <laughs> I think, but I'm, I'm not positive, but I, I think it is. Uh, you can get tickets online. Hilarities.com. Yeah. All right, go see Whitney Cummings this weekend. Uh, Whitney, thank you. We'll be right back on Rover's Morning Glory. Hang on. Rover's Morning Glory.